Hello friend, this is Ryan Hicks of TalkToProfit.com and today I'm talking about how you need to stop doing what's not working and start doing different things. There is a way that the human body and the psyche is programmed that we kind of get into ruts, we get into habits. Those can be very good for you. This is a way that the body preserves energy because you don't have to think and sit down and meditate doing about what you're going to do because you just do it. But it can also be very bad if the habits are not good. If the rut you're in is not getting you to where you want to go. And so many people are living a life, they're praying, and that's good, but prayer without action is useless because it doesn't have any faith. Faith puts the steps into the action. If you really believed that when you prayed, you believed that you received, you start acting on that. But so many people's lack of faith is evidenced by the fact they're not doing things differently. They're just doing the same thing, but they're wanting God to make a different result for them. And it just doesn't work. You can go out there and yell at your field as a farmer, but until you start planting some seeds, you're not going to get a harvest. And that's not God's fault. This is very basic stuff. But when it translates over to regular life and the mediocrity that is promoted by the world and by a lot of worldly professing Christians... People don't recognize how simple that is, that simple thought of, okay, if what I'm doing is not working, I need to start making some changes. Now, this does not mean you change everything, because maybe some things you're doing are working, and they're working very well, and that's great. Continue those things, maybe double down on those things. But these other things that aren't working for you, such as watching the news, playing video games, watching movies, being on social media for hours, and doing all this stuff that's wasting your life away and isn't adding any value to your life. I know I've talked to so many people over the years, especially with social media. It's the big thing today. In the past, it was more movies and video games. But I've talked to so many people who said, I don't know why. I was just four hours scrolling on social media. I didn't feel any better after it. But they keep doing it over and over again. It becomes this rut you get into. It's an addiction of sorts. And you need to stop you need to just stop doing these things that aren't working for you. Stop doing these things that you know aren't getting you good results. And then look for the opportunity. What is it that you could be doing instead of doing that thing that's not working for you? Now, for some people, especially if they really bought into the mediocrity, they're doing all the things the world tells them to do. They might need to overhaul their entire lives, completely change everything from the way they drive to work each morning, from where they work, from the position they have in the company. Maybe they need to be asking for a raise or a promotion instead of stay, staying around here in the mediocrity of just being happy that you got a job, just being happy that you're doing enough to get by. There are so many things about people's lives that need changing, but it's not until you get to a place where you can recognize that you need to make the changes, that you can really do anything about it. It's like blinders are on and people can't see the fact that the life they're living is not getting the results they want. So what you do then? Keep doing the same things you're doing and expect different results? Well, I know that sounds foolish when you lay it out like that. But the reality is that is what most people actually do. They never set that down and write down as a goal. I want to keep doing the same failed things I'm doing that aren't working for me and haven't worked for me ever and hope I get different results. Nobody's writing it down as a goal. But that is what so many people actually implement in their lives. And oftentimes it's because it's easier. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to put any effort into it. You just keep doing what you're doing. You're in that habit mode. So you're not even thinking about it. There's no energy involved really in it. You just do the same things. Get the same results. You whine and complain about it. Maybe you whine and complain to God about it. But you don't do anything different because you don't have any faith. You don't believe any new results are coming your way because you're not taking any actions based on the faith that you have, that you've prayed and you believed you received when you prayed. And now you're taking actions on that belief. So I want to encourage you strongly today. Really examine your life. Now, you could be one of those rare people who's not maybe stuck in mediocrity but you could be in your own form of mediocrity. Maybe you've done very well in life. Maybe your family life's great. Your relationships are great. Your business is doing well. Everything looks great, but you're stagnant. You're not growing any. You're not moving up the ladder any. And you know you could. 
It's one thing if you couldn't, but you know there's more you're capable of. There's more God's called you to, and yet you're just stuck in this place because your place, while not being the best you could do, is way better than average people. And that's a very bad position that many people, especially if you're a high-performing person, you're a successful entrepreneur, it is easy to get into that rut because your level is just so much higher than average people's mediocrity that you get in your own stuck rut of mediocrity on your level. It's just a different level of mediocrity because you're not growing any. You're not maturing. You're not improving. You're not building upon the great grace and gifts God has given you and you're just stagnant. You need to make some changes too. Now, oftentimes, it's not a matter of you got to completely overhaul everything. But if you're a high-performing person, you're kind of stagnant, just kind of in a rut. Maybe you need to double down on some things that are really working well for you and start pulling away attention and focus from the things that aren't doing much for you. This can be simple things. I know people who are very successful in business who aren't taking care of their health. Start making that a priority. And here's one of the things you'll find. If you dedicate 30 minutes or an hour a day to your health, to exercise, meditation, prayer, you will find that you'll get much better results in your business as well. I know it doesn't seem like that would work that way. It seems like you're just taking time away from your business. But I'm telling you, if you'll do that, it will improve your productivity, it will improve your performance, and you'll start getting better results. And that applies to anybody, especially if you're not a high-performing person. Your health is also ultra important for you. If you're sick all the time or you're overweight and you are out of energy, you have no energy all day, you're not going to get the things done you want to get done. Even if you were going to go out and physically try to do it, you just don't have the energy to do it. And that's where exercise can come in and be a very great blessing for you. Listen, we don't live lives like people did 2,000 years ago. Yes, the scripture says that bodily exercise profits little. It doesn't say it doesn't profit at all. But here's the thing. When you're talking to people who had great physical activities and labor in their work, they don't need to exercise. But people today normally don't have a lot of physical activity in their work. Oftentimes they have no physical activity. It's a very sedentary job. They sit down at a desk all day, typing on a computer, scrolling social media and pretending they're working. And just not doing a whole lot of physical movement. So we're in a very different time where we need to address the issues that face us today that are different from people 2,000 years ago. They're still the same spiritual things, but we don't have the movement in most people's business and most people's jobs that a person would have had 2,000 years ago. And so we need to make up for that by adding exercise into our lives. Listen, if you have a great physical job, you work and you're moving, you're active all day, you may not need any exercise. That's perfectly fine. But for most people, even if you do have a physical job, if you're obese, you're overweight, you're walking around with loads of fat on you, you need to do something. Actually, you need to do a couple things. You need to stop eating so much and you need to start moving more. These are just basic things. Now, I know people get mad about that because everybody wants to be patted on the back and given a gold star for being lazy and mediocre. I'm not going to tell you that. I'm not going to lie to you. This is coming from a place of love. It's not an attack. I want you to do well. I want you to be the greatest success you can be. I want you to be honoring to God. Do you think you're honoring to God if you're fat and lazy and slothful in your business? Of course not, my friend. Let's go out there and become the best we could possibly be. Let's be the healthiest we could be. Let's be the most spiritual we could be. Let's be the most faithful we can be. Let's be the most productive we can be. Let's be those people that honor God with their lives, truly honor God with their lives, not just pay lip service to it, but have a life that actually honors God in all areas. My friend, I pray this is a blessing for you. May God bless you richly.